I made a thousand videos in a thousand days. If you speak English, you're speaking to the minority. I probably wouldn't make 10 minute long YouTube videos. I hope this is not. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is Jade Dharma Wangza and in today's video, I interviewed Nas Daily, AKA Messiah. He is one of the most successful creators I personally know. Built a multi-million dollar brand through posting videos on Facebook and now runs a tech company called NAS Academy. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the behind the scenes of how a creator makes money and how you can build a successful brand today. Let's go check this out. Okay, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. Hello, everybody, hello, everybody, hello, everybody. <laughs> I was born and raised in Israel as a Palestinian. Very complicated background, I do not recommend it. And then I just, you know, I just, I just, I just, I came to the, to the United States, I studied here, and then I graduated, and then I start, wanted to become a creator. So I became a creator, and I made a thousand videos in a thousand days. How old were you? I was 24 when I started. Amazing. And I, the idea was, I don't know how to make videos. I don't know how this works. I don't even know how to use this thing. I just know nothing about film school. I know nothing about YouTube or Facebook, but I just want to say what I want to say. And then I started making those videos, a thousand videos in a thousand days. The first 271 videos failed. What, what do you mean feel like, got no views? Got some views, okay. but it didn't blow up. It didn't make money, it didn't make money? Oh, they didn't make money at all. Oh, Zero. No okay. Zero. It gets some views, but it's not like something like successful. So I was right. 100,000 followers by day 270, which is on Facebook, you cannot build a business on top. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Nas Daily exploded. And uh, now we're 100 people, 110 people around the world, and we create creator tech. So we help creators like me, like you, become better at what they do. That's it. And you make content in 12 different languages, right? That's a huge part of it. Yes. So we have, oh yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> like that's the, when I first heard that, Jenna, I was like, what the sh I was like, that's amazing. So tell me more. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. So we now have 45 million followers across the internet. Oh my God. 37 of them are on Facebook. We're big on Facebook. Like half of our followers are in English. The other half are in 12 different languages, which we localize. And so we also like help creators become multilingual. If you speak English, you're speaking to the minority. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do your parents speak English? No, they speak Indonesian. They don't. Same here. And so when you create all this content, your parents even don't understand. Totally. So what goal did you have in mind when first beginning your daily videos? It, it, definitely not, not money. Five really? years ago, no, five years ago, like if you tell me you're gonna make money from a Facebook page, I'll be like, you're crazy. Why were you so committed then? Because I had enough savings. So I had the privilege to be, not to worry about money for one year. When humans don't have to work for money, incredible things happen. Right. And that's what happened to me, right? I focused on what I really love and money became a guaranteed side effect. What I really wanted to do is I wanted to scream because I feel like the things we talk about in private, no one talks about it in public. Mm -hmm. And that's really why I wanted to uh, create content because I feel like it gives you a voice. So you had the intention to impact people and that's what motivated you. I think for a lot of creators, like I think same with me, like when I started my YouTube channel when I was nine, I mean, I have to say 13 years old because that's the legal age for YouTube, but when I was like, <laughs> 13 and nine, it was out of passion and drive. And that's and the reason why I feel like I was able, I didn't blow up until 2016, so that's seven years later. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, they're like, why did you do that? Well, it's because I did it for passion and growth. And when you're able to do something without an immediate end result, you can actually put more dedication and craft into yes. it. And then 100%. therefore it will help you excel faster. 100%. I think a lot of people want to be an influencer these days, but they're very money driven. So yeah. what's your advice to them today? I mean, everybody looks at YouTube is like, okay, I want to be a YouTuber because the ads are better. Right. It's like, bro, you are nothing. Like, why do you want the ads to be better? Like, when you get a 10,000 views here, you're gonna make 10 bucks. You shouldn't index for the 10 bucks, you should index for the 10 million bucks. And the 10 million bucks only come when you have 100 million views. So you gotta index for exposure. Exposure equals money. And so that's why I tell everybody, like, if I were to start over again, I probably wouldn't make 10 minute long YouTube videos. I hope this is not, this is 10 minute long YouTube video. <laughs> Awkward. <laughs> I would make one minute TikToks, one minute Instagram reels, one minute YouTube shorts. That's it. And I will win. What's your frequency every day? Every day. Every day. If you same are- Same content, just distributed? Yeah, same content. Same content. Same okay. content. If you have no job, you should not take a week enough. I, I feel like a Gary Vee now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> if you fucking have no job, you shouldn't have- If you're 23, you're young, you're a baby. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you should not take a day out. So you should definitely be a daily content creator at least. At least? At least. <laughs> Some days I made two videos. We talked about this before, but for yeah. people who want clarity, like out of the 110 people working with you, 
who's on your content side? So when I first started, the first 700 videos that I made were just me, just me doing the scripting, editing, shooting. My girlfriend was helping me like on the side, but essentially it was like my responsibility. Now we have probably 30 people to manage the content. In July, we got 600 million views on the internet in all languages. So 600 million views wow. with 30 people. That's insane. Yeah, it's amazing. So I think what sticks out to you is like a lot of people with maybe 10 million or even like my friends with like millions of followers and maybe just say one platform YouTube, you know, they don't reinvest as much as you do in your company and your brand. Like you've hired a whole team. Yes. And I think that's really interesting because one of the things I was told when I was like 16 and I first made my thousand dollar check was my parents were like, you need to reinvest that to an editor, you need to scale and you need to put it back, yes. don't put it into a- Your parents told you that? Yeah. Well, you are very lucky <laughs> because your parents understand entrepreneurship. Yeah. Most parents will be like, keep that for yourself, stash it in the Cayman Islands <laughs> and be worried if you lose your job. Exactly. What's your advice for people to, to start to scale? So it took me two years to realize that I need to double myself. Okay. And that's most creators think I am the end all be all. And I think that too, right? The idea starts with me. I edit it and I launch it and I talk to the people. I am the creation. Mm -hmm. And so you get that like God complex as a creator, which makes it very difficult to double yourself because no one is better than me. I'm the best at editing. I'm the best at shooting. I'm the best at scripting. And so that's, that, that thoughts go into many creators' brains. And it went into, through my brain up until I met an editor who's better than me. How would you find them? I had a boot camp where I invited my followers to like. Okay, so your followers. Yeah, my followers. I only hire my followers. Really? All 110 of them? I don't remember hiring someone that doesn't know my videos. Great, that's good. Only one. <laughs> Only one person. But most people are my followers who I find through Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, the followers of my LinkedIn page. So it's very important for us what people understand what do we stand for. So my, my advice to people is hire your followers. That's it. Don't go to fucking LinkedIn and be like, well, I'm looking yeah. for, hire your followers. Okay. Put on Instagram, I wanna work with someone, apply here. And content travels really fast. So you can uh, you can reach your, your editor pretty fast. Guys, I'm hiring the LinkedIn bio. <laughs> yeah, okay, LinkedIn bio, Linktree, where do you get Beacon. Beacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So you're not only a creator, you have a brand, you also have the tech platform. So tell me like every which way you monetize. 20% comes from YouTube and Facebook ads. Then another 30% comes from brand deals. Brand deals. Like governments and, and companies and whatever. 10% comes from, let's say, speaking engagements. Oh really? You know, just like go out and talk and just talk about whatever they, the companies want you to talk about. 20% comes from like student sales, like academy sales, education sales. Like it's very important to monetize through education because it's an opportunity to do good and do well at the same time. Are these platform sales or your sales? Uh, my sales. Nice. My sales and then there's a platform sales on top of it. And the remaining 30% or so are like investor money. Oh. So we raised $10 million, $11 million to build Nas Academy. Right, so that's like the idea is that to build technology platforms, it's very expensive. You need to spend one year and five engineers, each one of them paying a lot of money. So product managers, designers. So you're looking at a million dollar investment yep. at least. And so, so far we've invested $3 million into this Nas Academy platform. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the, it's not profitable. So a lot of the money comes from like investor money to help it keep it alive and to like grow it even more and more and more. You know, why do you think it's so important for creators to, you know, diversify, diversify their income? Do you think it's crucial for everyone to take approach like you? I think everybody should teach. We live in the world of like the and world, as someone said this before, like the and economy. Is it Gary Vee said that? I don't know if <laughs> Gary Vee said that. I, don't know I heard it from a guy named Hugo. Okay, Hugo, okay. Someone said that, someone <laughs> copied someone, someone copied someone, now I'm gonna copy someone. In the past, it used to be, you could only be a doctor or a lawyer. You could only be an engineer or a, or a journalist. But in the future, in the present, you could be a podcaster and a doctor and a teacher and a professor because you could do all these part-time. So we think every creator should teach. Instead of just selling merchandise, which is fine, you should also teach because teaching helps you do good and do well in the world. You can do good by empowering others with your education and you can do well by making money. It's the best of both worlds. And also, knowledge, as someone else said, not me, is the- <laughs> no, no, no. no, oh yeah. No, not that. Okay. Knowledge is the only thing that increases when you give it away. So that's really powerful in a sense that everything we learn, right? I'm giving away my knowledge right now. You're giving away your knowledge all the time. And I think there should be a structured way to give knowledge in a way that's not fraudulent, like Ty Lopez, and in a way that's like fine, you know? I love that. Yeah. Tell me more about the process of building a platform. A technology company. Yeah. Oh my God. First of all, it's not for everybody. 
Yeah. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. You might look at every camera. It's not for everybody. <laughs> Be careful before you say, I want to I wanna start an app. Same with venture capital. You were warning one of my friends to like, yeah. not raise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me more. So, I mean, like, you know, be, like, it took me five years to decide that I want to build this technology product and I want to get this investor money. But it took me five years and 35 million followers later. The reason I say that is because creating a video is very different from creating a technology product. Where does the user log in? How do I market? How do I do SEO? How do I, where does the button go? What is the, what, how much should I charge for this? These are different fields as opposed to like creating a video on YouTube. Yeah. One, two is you need to get software engineers. Finding a software engineer to come and work with you is very difficult. I tried to hire my friend Ben, he charged me a quarter million. Quarter million, <laughs> it makes total sense. Why would I come and code for you when I come code for myself? Now, if you are comfortable with these challenges, you should 100% build a technology company, 1000%. Because I think creator founders is the future. You're a creator, your next iteration in life is to be an entrepreneur or a founder. Wow. Instead of creating value for others, you should create value for yourself. So when I go and promote refresh water, mm -hmm. right? I might as well build my own water company, you know? If I truly believe in the product. Now, if I don't believe in the product, or like not much, yeah, I'll promote refresh because it takes 5% of my time. But I believe in education so much, it takes 150% of my time. And I give value and I gain value. So, you know, that's how you should think about it. So you came from traditional education. Like you went, what school did you go to? Harvard. And you're building an academy with, maybe let's just say non-traditional educators, right? Like what do you, cause like I, you mentioned like not everyone can build a tech company, not everyone can teach as well. What makes a good teacher and like what's, what do you look for in a creator? It's a great question. If you want to be a great teacher, you have to get two things right. You have to be engaging. Okay and you have to be knowledgeable. The problem is most Harvard professors or most like, like you know, university professors have knowledge, but they're not engaging. Mm -hmm. It's actually much harder to be engaging than to have knowledge because we're not teaching rocket science. Being engaging, being like loud. Storytellers. Storyteller, telling stories and capturing people's attention is very difficult. So creators have that done. They're already very, very engaging. Right. They just need to work on their knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> You know? So what do you recommend? We help them. Okay. We have a curriculum team. Oh, wow. Most creators don't know how to build their curriculum. Huh. Don't know how to teach. So we literally help them with editing and with building the curriculum so that they become their own version of masterclass. You know, if you look at Gordon Ramsay, maybe Gordon Ramsay is not a great teacher, but he created masterclass with his like course because they made him into a teacher, but he's still engaging. So if you want to build a great teacher, it's easier to give you knowledge than to make you engaging. That's True. Yeah. My dad, he's a computer scientist, and uh, although he's so knowledgeable, he knows everything but data. I can't. Nothing you can do there. <laughs> Not engaging. I love you, dad. Um, <laughs> that's amazing. So, do you ever see yourself scaling past multiple phases with with Mass Daily? Yes, a hundred percent. Okay. This is my goal. Okay, explain. Maybe you should be the next phase. <laughs> So I, the way I look at Nas Daily, I am the host of Nas Daily. Exactly. So kind of like Trevor Noah doesn't own the Daily Show. Nope. He's just the host. Mm -hmm. John Stewart was the host. So I'm looking for the person to succeed me. And that's like really hard. I need someone that I can trust 100% to like, you know, like be the, be the face and the voice of Nas Daily. And so I'm looking for that person now because I want to focus on like building a company right. as opposed to... So you see like a BuzzFeed like type of team or different hosts, different media. Yes. Yes, but I don't want to have 50 hosts, just one or two. One or two, one or two that's oh, it. Oh, interesting. Because then it becomes like a revolving door. You know, who's this? Who's, who the hell is talking to me now, you know? Okay. I want that affinity. I love Nas Daily. I love the first host, Nosair, but I love the second host a lot more. At the end of the day, I may be engaging, but I'm not very lovable. You know, I'm like an Arab man screaming at you. <laughs> like, how am I different than the fucking, you know, like, you know, Al-Qaeda? <laughs> It's true. Okay, so you're looking for diverse faces to bring the brand more the lovable, brand. Okay. more lovable. More lovable. Yeah, it's true. I'm actually curious because I personally divide my day in two parts. I have my content creation, what's up, guys? Yeah. But I also run my media company and the things that I do. Yeah. How do you structure your day? So I'm not good at separation. I'm good at like this. Okay. Like all my work is like this. Really? You know. So there's a lot of context switching. I'm not proud of it. Okay. So I'm not good. I'm not the most good at organization. Like the day I woke up, I had one hour. I had to create like three videos. So I, I did the voiceover for three videos and I sent it to Singapore. Then I went and I did a meeting, right, for like with a, with a technology team to talk about NAS Academy. Then I went to call, meet Colin and Samir to talk about, you know, selling NAS Academy. Then I came here to talk to you about NAS dating. Then I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go talk to my girlfriend. <laughs> you know, then I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna go talk to my girlfriend's mom. Then, <laughs> then I'm gonna go back to like making content. So it's, it's like 
four different things that I'm doing at the same day, which is not necessarily, it's not the smartest solution. The, the smartest solution I would, I would suggest people try is do content for one week, do technology for one week. Real, a week? But I'm imagining, say if I have a team, right, and I focus on technology for a yeah. week, and then I peace out because I'm on content, but they can't communicate with me because I'm on content. Wouldn't that be like slowing things down? It, it would slow things down. Okay. Yeah, it would slow things down. I and mean, you just, you gotta get the right team structure in place. The smartest CEOs are the ones who hire the smartest people, put them in the same room, lock the door, and leave. <laughs> That's it. That's really, that's really it. That's all I gotta do. So I have now, let's say like five smart leaders, right? Like in the, in the company. I, I need to get like 10 smart like heads off. That's it. And then they'll, they'll build the company, they'll figure it out. And I'll just spend my time talking to you about what we are doing inside that closed room. So you have, how many people are those like leaders in your company? So those are the hardest to find. How many leaders are, most of my leaders are women actually. Really? In the studio, in the studios, yeah. In the academy, they're men. In the studios, because because they're engineers. Academy is more tech, yeah. Yeah. Uh, like it's very difficult to find a female head of engineer. I know. But my head of video is female. My head of projects is female. Head of HR is female. Like I found working with women to be much, much better, and they're just much easier to work with, and they do great work. So you have how many leaders out of 110 people? You'd say. So in the studios, I have let's say five. Okay. In the academy, I have a ten. Wow. So I have 15 leaders. Amazing. Yeah, it sounds like a lot, but it's actually not enough. And so I have 15 leaders. Now, like I say, like I work most of my time with 15 people. I don't work with the remaining 100. And then eventually with this 15 people, like people will be promoted to be like, they'll be like 10, then five, then three. You know, eventually you want to work with one. Really? Yeah. Eventually you'll find yourself only working with one person. Right, so they report to you and then, yeah. yeah, the waterfall effect. So you just trust them to, to the pyramid is, that the pyramid is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's literally a pyramid scheme. <laughs> A hundred percent. Every company is a pyramid scheme. At this point. Yeah, yeah. But I think creators should like, you know, creators like you, like building companies, right? No one knows how to structure a company. Yeah. How the hell, where do I start? How do I hire? Like these things, I only know because I went to Harvard and all my friends talk about this stuff. But if you didn't go to Harvard, into these hacking, hack Harvard circles, where do you go? So I personally grew up with, you know, I have a very Asian household. So a lot of them went to USC, MIT. I didn't go to college. So you didn't go to college? No. Wow. So I learned everything through, my dad's an entrepreneur too, so I learned through him, but I also learned through YouTube. And yeah. um, there wasn't a platform that taught me anything. It was literally online content. Yeah. So I truly am very inspired what you're building. And I think yeah. that's amazing because someone mean, that knew was like 16 that left school to do online careers didn't have a place to learn. Wow. So, yeah, it's so, it's so fragmented. It's really fragmented. Really fragmented. And I think the best person that you're going to learn from is the person you look up to. So if, you're, if you look up to Casey Neistat, like you should learn from him. You don't have to learn from some David Schmuck somewhere on the internet that created a marketing course. But I think your platform is even different because you talk about the cohort. Yes. Talk, talk a little bit yes. about that. Oh, so the way, the way so Nas means humans in, Ara in Arabic. So the idea is like every time you go into the academy, you interact with a human. And the whole idea is that your classmate will become your co-founder, 100%. So you're gonna find a support level that goes beyond just the classroom, beyond just the, the teacher. And that's really important. I think if you look at Skillshare or YouTube or Masterclass, they're just video files. <laughs> if I told you 20 years ago, technology is gonna be amazing, you're gonna think we're gonna have flying cars and we're gonna have incredible online education. And guess what? We don't have flying cars. But we have we don't have online education. Online education is fucking video files. Yeah. All of online education now is video files. So that's why we need to build a new way of learning on the internet. Cohort-based learning, Zoom sessions, meeting, meet up in real life, monthly meetups, creator meetups, like that human elements help you feel less lonely. And that's really powerful. Where can people find you, Nasir? This is amazing. Uh, on the internet. On the Nas internet. Daily? Nas Daily. N-A-S Daily every day. Gosh, thanks it. so much for being here. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Jay. This is awesome. Thank you, everybody, for listening. <laughs> She's great. Keep following her. <laughs>